Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Now I say that twice. First, as a greeting, but secondly, as a declaration and an affirmation that his day is indeed a good one. A man casually wanders into an art museum. He's tired, he's nonchalant, he's indifferent, he's almost bored, but he eventually takes notice of one particular painting. He is immediately drawn to it. He's mesmerized by it. He intensely observes it. He's stunned. He's baffled. He's confused. He's intrigued, and then he's taken. After a considerable amount of time, and without warning, he begins to weep. And he weeps not so much because the painting is so beautiful, and it is to him extraordinarily beautiful, but he weeps because he did not paint it. It has been said, the voyage of discovery is not seeking new landscapes, but in having new eyes. In this instance, new eyes facilitated a transformation where creativity, faith, and visual literacy converged in a fleeting moment in a single soul. The presumption that through art it is possible to emerge from the self, consciously or subconsciously, and know what another person sees seems viable. For the man's apparent sudden urge to create when the painting was engaged, is not instilled at the point of the experience. It is awakened. His new eyes delivered him to a place of reconciliation, unification, and the desire to know firsthand creation. He reconciled his personal indifference a state often defined as the exact opposite of faith and love. And because a man of passionate belief, and I'm sorry, he became a man of passionate belief in what is visibly possible and what is soulfully enlightening. He connected deeply and unexpectedly with the creative expression of someone else. And that avenue became an express lane to private, lesser known, unrecognized, intimate, personal realities. He simultaneously confronted the boundaries of his own cocoon of beliefs and burst forth both in the awareness of and evidence of a restored view of what is possible. If prominent visual studies theorist W.J.T. Mitchell is accurate in his contention that the image is overtaking text as the quintessential definer of culture, in part because of the digital age, but more pragmatically due to the profound and historical semantics of the visual. That is the immediacy of viewing, viewing with variant levels of understanding and interpretation in contrast to what may be seen as a time relative and potentially 
restrictive language that is the property of reading, then it is reasonable to further surmise that the academic response, theoretically, should develop effective means to this shift. This probable need establishes special, if not unique, opportunities for those charged with the cooperative role of teaching and coordinating exhibition spaces. Therein rest at least a few intriguing what ifs. What if the potential to activate underutilized, untapped, perhaps even latent approaches sets up platforms for an improved marriage of purpose between canonical decisions, discussions of art in the classroom and beyond, and images heightened in designated live, real-time presentation spaces? What if the exhibition experience itself deliberately becomes central to the formation of emerging theories and language associated with current and evolving image-text relationships and dialogues? What if provisions are made to address in unforeseen, unfathomable ways the transfiguration of inner knowing to outward expression, such as that represented in the previously referenced epiphany, despite the fact that such occurrences are not always predictable. They are not always predictable, but they are inevitably possible. What if a means is devised to cup, collect, analyze, and proselytize such tears in sincere desires to connect and renew knowledge about the power of things visual? What if there is an active engagement, an active participation in the creative process that elevates learning potential to new heights, where students who are assigned to go, faculty and administrators who go out of a sense of obligation, diverse communities who come out of boredom, staggers in, passive patrons, etc., are represented in an innovative, collective record for study of individuals whose hidden reflections of themselves were revealed in unexpected moments that we label with the term suddenly. When interaction with an image leads to the realization that we have new eyes. What if the synergy of sight and spirit is contextualized in high orders of academic commitment and human compassion, where sincerity and determination are the pathway? Ability is the steering wheel. Hard work is the fuel. And faith is the rubber that meets the road. What if, Judy, I leave the final what if for you to finish. My dream, my hope, and my prayer is that there will always be a full understanding of what I believe John Sachs intended when he stated, it is wise to learn but it is godlike to create. May we each, out of the altars of our own hearts, endeavor to be facilitators of not only lifelong learning, but also facilitators of the advancement 
of a God-like creativity. Thank you.